Hello, welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm your host, Michelle. How have you been? It's been a minute since we talked. I know life has been happening. I hope things are going well for you out there. So today, I wanted to share this article with you because I thought it was a really good read about the 12 powerful things women want in a man. And obviously, this is written by a man. So I'm ultra, ultra curious as to what it is that this man might think that women want these 12 powerful things that women would want in a man. So before we get started, don't forget to like and comment. And if you want more information like this, please subscribe. I do appreciate it. And I want to give a shout out to all the new subscribers who have come in these past couple of days. I've been down a little bit and I'm glad to see that my content is at least getting out there at all. So thank you. Anyways, let's get started on this article. It starts out by saying this wonderful thing. To understand female psychology is a difficult job for an average person. He didn't say men. In one moment, a girl feels happy, and another time, another time, she's unhappy, just like any other human being. It is human psychology. We are in a mood of sadness and happiness because of different circumstances in our daily lives. I will share with you, this is the author, 12 powerful traits and qualities that a woman wants in a man. I read these powerful lessons in the book, What Women Want in Men. And and I will link, uh, put a link in the description of this article so you can read this for yourself. But the first thing that women want is it says, a man without a purpose is neither the master of his fate nor the captain of his soul. He is merely a minion, a pawn, a tool for men and women who know they want what they want out of life and who are determined to get it. That's very true. And that's true for women, just as much as it is true for men. If you don't really have a purpose in your life and you just kind of drifting along and you're going with the flow, you, you don't really have anything to give or to receive. I mean, that is what it is. It's not going to come. Nothing good is going to come out of that if you're just going along with the flow. You're in for a lot of disappointment, heartache, pain. You know, and you just end up in a place that you really didn't want to be. So anybody without a purpose, and I believe women have purposes too. This is very true for you. You you just become a pet. And, you know, you're, you're on the board, your little pawn. They move you around. They get what they want out of you. You get nothing in return. Two, the main thing that a woman wants from a man is experience feeling like a woman. She wants to lose herself and her femininity. And the only way she can feel this feminine experience is when a man acts like a man. I'm not sure how I, I feel about that. how it is worded. But I, I don't want to get lost because femininity is a very strong and powerful force. I mean, people talk about femininity as if it's a weak, you know, it's lesser. No, it's a very powerful force force mother earth is feminine right and look at all that the earth provides all that the earth is all that the earth does that's powerful i want a man of equal power does that make sense a person who is equal in his masculinity as well as i am in my femininity and the two of us can be two whole people together i know that sounds kind of hokey but that's how I feel about it. I don't know if I like the way this is worded, but I and I don't want to lose myself in my feminine because I know what I am and I know what I have to do and I know who I have to be. And I'm okay with being whatever that is that I'm called to be. And you should be okay with that. Um, it's not about getting lost in your femininity. It's about having the stability and the groundness and the maturity for the person you know, that if I go off and I do something, that you're going to take care of things over here. You're competent. Maturity, I would call it. Um, yes, act like a man. Act, be, be competent. <laughs> if I go off and I leave for the day, 
being a man, in my view, would mean that you would feed the kids. You would take care of the household. Just like if the polar opposite was in reverse and I was at home, of course I'm expected to take care of the kids and take care of things at home and pay the bills or, you know, just just be competent. Be whole in your personhood. So it's not about getting lost in your femininity. It's about having the assurance that the person you are with have you have equality between you. Does that make sense? Number three, learn to become ridiculously comfortable with people not liking you. One of the best ways to do this is to become no man yourself. A no man yourself. I say this for women as well. Uh, no is a word. It's okay to say no. One of my biggest mistakes, the biggest things I ever made in my life was because I uh, I confuse kindness with niceness. And that's going to come up. I don't want to get too much ahead of myself. But kindness is the ability to understand that you can't help everyone. Um, you can be kind and not be nice. You can be kind by not giving into whatever is going on out there. You can be kind by not helping somebody to destroy themselves. Being kind has a standard. Being nice has no standards. Being nice is subversive. But I'm a little bit ahead of myself. There's no good woman in her in her right mind wants to be with a nice guy, Mr. Nice Guy. No, because niceness kills. Niceness kills. It's a subversion of yourself. Nice people have a lot of rage underneath. One of the prime examples of that, and I was just watching that with my husband Saturday, I think, is the movie Beef, right? Anybody watch that on Netflix? And the the woman, uh, the 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 woman in the in the uh, show is being pervasively nice, and underneath all that niceness is this rage, you know, because niceness kills. She's not telling the truth to her husband. She's not telling the truth to her partners. She's not telling the truth to herself. She's just not living in any kind of truth at all. Niceness is a lie because you're not nice. You're angry. You're demanding something. You're subverting something. It kills you and it draws the life out of everybody, including yourself, especially yourself. So I agree. No woman wants to be with Mr. Nice Guy. Mr. Nice, it's not even about being a doormat at this point. It's just about being, well, it is about being a doormat, but no no backbone. I don't think a man in his right mind wants a woman with no backbone. I just don't believe that. In any reason, would I want to be with a nice guy? Do I uh, believe a man wants to be with a nice girl? You know, somebody with no backbone. Because that's not, no. Niceness kills, let me tell you. Being kind is one thing. Being nice, no. Your number one enemy when trying to build a meaningful and powerful relationship with an amazing woman is going to be your insecurities. That's the same with women. Insecurity also kills. But you have to learn to overcome those. Um, Insecurity is complicated. I mean, that's based on a lot of things that you go through in life. It's based on your childhood. It's based on yourself, your failures, you know, how that affected you, how you dealt with them. And that requires inner work. Um, insecurities will uh, kill a relationship because you will always, there's a, you, you've heard this many times, you know, there's a s soundtrack and things running in your head telling you or subverting your happiness. You can be in the moment and your insecurity will kill the moment. You can be vibing and insecurity will kill your vibe. That's another thing that kills. But it's also, it's all in the same vein, niceness, insecurity. Anything that subverts you or causes you to subvert yourself or um, sabotages you or oppresses you, 
it's all part of the same beast. It's an evil entity that seeks to uh, kill, steal, and destroy your life and your happiness. You need to, no, no, no. And if you, and the next one, number six, if you don't feel secure with yourself, no woman will feel secure with you. Same with women. Okay. If we're not secure, we can't be, you know, we can't be secure in a relationship. I saw years ago, well, not even years ago, like not too long ago, there was a woman. We were all at this party. It was years ago, actually. We were all at this party, and, you know, there were all the thin girls, and they were all the, you know, you know how parties are. And this woman, who was not at all what we would call conventionally beautiful, got up and was the star of the party. Beautiful, sunshine, smiling, happy. She got all the attention. She was the life of the party. She was sunshine and bright and roses and all the beautiful things that we think about when we see life, when we think of life, we think of that kind of thing. That was her. She was that personified. Her confidence, her security, all of those things were very, it just, it just beamed out of her. Ooh. Yeah. It just beamed out of her. And I remember looking at all these beautiful women who had their makeup and their rods and they were their lipstick and they had their little dresses on and how they would kind of stare at her kind of confused because they believed themselves in their insecurity that they had done all the things to present their beauty, but they didn't know how to... Let's put it this way. Their insecurity showed. And even though she wasn't beautiful or thin or any of the attributes one would consider to be beautiful, she just was so much fun that the the men gathered around her, the women gathered around her. Having and being secure in yourself is just such an attractive trait. Everybody wants to be around it. It's a nice, it's positivity. Like, when you're securing yourself, you're positive, you know? I mean, I don't know how else to describe it, but I, 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 when I watch the whole thing and I play it back in my mind, it is just her being secure in herself, not worrying about all the other girls over there and these just being confident. And I think just watching her and recalling that sometimes, I realize that that is just really one of the most attractive traits anybody can have, male or female. Just being comfortable and secure in your own skin. It's wonderful to be around people who are like this. Number seven, the cure for worry and anxiety is action. And when I remember this, I can always do something better to bring out change in the way that I'm feeling. That's so true. That's so true. I suffer from anxiety big time. Last year was better than the year before, but it was it was pretty big. And I remember that one of the things I had to do was to get in front of the camera, which I was really I didn't understand that kind of anxiety. I never had it before. Well, I do, I do suffer with it, but I just didn't realize it was there in the way that it was. And one of the things that helped me was to come here on YouTube or to go on TikTok and just go on camera, get used to going on camera. And I slowly I'm beginning to get better at being in front of the camera. But it is about action, doing what you don't want to do, doing um, overcoming your insecurity, doing it anyways, failing seven is it what is the Chinese saying? Falling seven times and getting up eight. Yes, it is all about action. If you feel insecure about our weight, we've heard this, we know this, then we need to exercise. We need to make, I don't even know if it's exercise, but just do something to change how we feel about ourselves. We have the power to change. Men and women, we do. We have the power to change how we are feeling. And if it's beyond us, 
then there is help out there. We can go get mental help. There are free clinics. There are uh, free calls. There is help out here. That's one of the wonderful things about being in this country. Like everybody has something that can help somebody in this world. And we should really reach out for that, especially when we feel overwhelmed or things are out of our, out of our control. Number eight, if you've never had a gorgeous and highly affectionate woman treat you like a king, you're missing out. I had a highly gorgeous and affectionate man treat me very well. But I think that starts out by you treating yourself like a queen or a king. Too many times we look for validation. I did a live. I didn't release it. Again, I'm insecure. Uh, but um, we look for validation outside of ourselves. And I posted a video not too long ago, last year, where the, the woman... The woman in the video talks about how she treated herself. And when you treat yourself well, you don't have, you don't valid. Uh, uh, anyways, I was trying to say <laughs> validation comes from you, right? And what do I mean by that? The video I posted, there was another video is uh, I talk about this there's a doctor and I'll put I'll post the video in there you can go watch it he had two he went on a date with two of his friends and one woman was getting hit on and 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 disrespected and the other one nobody would touch her I believe that when you don't seek validation outside of yourself that you have all your ducks in a row and you're your you've worked on yourself you are secure in yourself. Um, a lot of people, and that's men and women, who are not on that level will not mess with you. In other words, if you are not of the person who can, I hate to use that word handle, but if you can't handle that kind of woman, they don't mess with you. Only the man who is, who understands what he's looking at, or the woman who understands what she's looking at, understands who you are, what you are, and recognizes you. You're not going to appeal to everyone. Does that make sense? So validation, which is, you know, that need, that's already filled because you filled that yourself. Number nine, and yeah, you, know, you know, somebody treating you like a king or a queen, that's an ego thing, you know, that's an ego thing. But I believe that only you can really be the king or the queen. And then, you know, and that comes from just getting yourself straightened out, if that makes any sense. If you want to impress a woman, or rather the ideal kind of high quality woman that you want to attract, the first thing you must do is focus on building your character and making yourself much more masculine in a natural sense. I don't know why I like this, but I do. Okay. He says you must build your character. After a lot of people don't even know what character is, which is funny to me because you'll hear a lot of people talk about character. Oh, um, one of the things that used to make me roll my eyes in my head was women was like, you know, it's my character. <laughs> I go, well, you don't even know what you're talking about. Like if you're sitting here making fun of somebody's shoes, you don't have any character. All right. The, your character is exposed. Let's put it that way. All right. Character is who you are. This is what I was trying to convey in the previous number eight. Character is who you are when nobody's looking. Everybody thinks character is what you represent. No, character is who you really are when nobody's looking. When there's nobody to impress 
when there's there's nothing coming in it for you. You're not giving anything. You're not getting anything. It is who you are when you are alone. That's what character is. If there is money on the table, would you take it? If your character says, yeah, I would take that money. I'd take some of that money. Uh, it's important. Like, that's who you are. A lot of people think it's what they represent. Oh, I have a good character. Oh, I'm a church-going woman. Oh, I read the Bible. Oh, I do this. Oh, I do that. This guy has character. He says, focus on building your character. Who are you? It's really about focusing on yourself and becoming who you are when nobody's looking. Why is that important? Well, if you are an attractive person and you have an opportunity or you are attracted to another person, you have an opportunity to cheat, will you? Because you think you're going to get away with it? What character do you have? A lot of people lack character. It's integrity. It's integrity. It's honesty. It's admitting who you are, understanding your weaknesses. It's, it's everything. Who are you when you look in that mirror? Not who you want to be. Not the cognitive dissonance that you're selling to the world. Who are you really? And when you stand on business, I like that term. I, I, I do like it. Stand on business. Then who you represent, what, what's inside you will come out. A lot of men don't realize that when they're talking to women and they're on these, you know, they're quoting these other men, that they lack integrity and character. We know that when you're when I'm not looking, you're not going to be the man that you represent yourself to be. You have no integrity. You have no character. Character is what you have learned, the mistakes you made and how you've learned from the mistakes. A lot of people get into marriages, they have no character, no character integrity. That's why they cheat. You know, preachers do all the time preachers have no character a lot of these men who are in here on the pulpit have no character no integrity because if they did they wouldn't be in the pulpit now i like this line right here he says always protect her character that's a good thing the bible and i can't remember the verse it's, it's a new the new version of the bible but i like that interpretation and it says that a man doesn't come out of his character and he doesn't allow the woman to come out of hers great deal to do with integrity you don't put people in a situation that would cause them to feel insecure cause them to curse at you yell at you uh you know, you, you just don't do that. It's how you treat people as well. Character, character is this big, wonderful piece of the puzzle. Who you are when you're when nobody's watching, your integrity as a person, how you treat people, how you think of people, what you think of people. Um, it's a kind of humility because everybody thinks humility is shuffling around, putting your head down and no, humility is understanding humanity and respecting it. It's, it's all of these things, all of these wonderful attributes. And when a person has character, it is a beautiful, beautiful thing. It really is. Because you... It, when I when I say some when a man is to protect, I don't necessarily mean that he should jump in front of a bullet for me. I, that that would be nice. Um, <laughs> I don't mean that. I mean you protect my heart, you protect my feelings, you protect my emotions, right? You don't let me or allow me to step out of a character or put me in a position where I would step out of character. That's important. Now, 
Number 10, you must refuse to be a doormat for other people. That's part of being a nice guy. Nice guy kills you. Nice guys kill you. And yes, you have to say no to people you love. Nope. Sorry, I can't do it. You know what my mother used to tell me? My mother used to say, don't let people walk all over you. I never really kind of listened to mom. You know, you, you it finally clicks in after you've had children of your own. But when you don't have any kids, it doesn't click in at all. She said, no. If, even if I ask you to do something wrong, or or not wrong, if I ask you something that's outside of your, you can say no. That's what I'm talking about. And no, that does not mean you, family, wife, whatever. That's being kind. Being kind to yourself, being kind to your wife, being kind to everybody to say no. I want to do a video, and I don't want to make too many promises because this but um, just because you love somebody doesn't mean you don't tell them no. So, yeah, you have to assert yourself. You don't, you don't have to be aggressive, but you don't have to assert yourself. And that goes for women, too. If there's something that's not right and uncomfortable for you, you can say no. Just because you love somebody is not a yes. If you're saying yes to them all the time, it's a weakness. You don't want to be weak. You want to be nice. As a man, you were meant to be self-reliant, independent, and highly capable of leading yourself and your family in the best way you possibly can. Leadership, oh my God. Everybody want to be a leader, but nobody want to be a leader. You know, leadership. Let's put it this way. And this sounds so, so, so cliche. But if you can't follow anybody, then you can't lead anybody. Leadership is not what you think it is. It's not telling everybody, well, I'm just going to do this and that. And this is how it's going to be in this house. That's not leadership. That's a dictatorship. And as a rule, humans like to rebel against dictatorships. I know I do. As a rule, we like to, you know, get away from a dictatorship. But the truth of the matter is, the tr truth of the matter is that leadership is by example. I don't think I ever learned anything by listening to anybody, to be honest with you. You know? I always learn by watching people. Some of the best lessons in life I learned just by looking at somebody. Like I said, at the party, watching this young lady be secure and happy and confident and not be what we would call beautiful in our sense. And I only say that because she exudes such... <sighs> I can't even say. What do they call her? Je ne sais quoi. She, she exuded such beauty that, yes, you're a little bit jealous of that because you're like, where does that come from? And really, when I come up here, I do want to share that with other women. I want women to have that experience where you are so beautiful that it just comes from within. I know that sounds corny, doesn't it? It sounds ridiculous, but it really is something that happens. It's a reality. It's not a pie in the sky, but it does take work and it does take decentering men in your life. And the reason why you decenter men is because you make the best decisions for yourself. Just like this guy says, as a man, you're meant to be self-reliant, independent, and highly capable of leading. Women, we have to lead ourselves. I think about Harriet Tubman, right? Harriet Tubman would not have been Harriet Tubman if she didn't heed to the calling of her true self. I know, sounds hokey. Bear with me. Her husband, her first husband, did not want her to be part of the Underground Railroad. And he left her and married somebody else because she was a part of the Underground Railroad and she didn't and he didn't believe in it, right? 
because she heeded the calling. She, you know, they sent her men. She went on. She did the heeded the call. She did something enormous. How many lives did she save? You know, how many, how much freedom has she helped people to attain? That is, in my opinion, in my assessment, holiness in its proper form. Like you eschew all the other things. There is nothing else but the calling. And when you're called to do something higher, you have to decenter that which is not for you. And I'm trying, am I trying to sound like a preacher? I don't want to sound like a preacher. But what I'm saying is when you decenter men, you ascend to the higher calling. And the higher calling is not submissive the higher calling is choose all that and you become the best person you can be i was able to get married because after a while i stopped looking for validation and then when it was time to be a mother and to be what i was able to do that because i had the grace and patience to do that a lot of us in situations where we don't have the grace and the patience to do that because we're centering everybody else in dating marriage oh my god if i don't get married by this certain time oh my god if i don't have babies oh my god what kind of person am i you rush a process that you really need to take time to find out what you want and a lot of people i believe get into these marriages and they really don't know what they want they don't know what they like they don't they don't understand marriage in its entirety. They, they listen to a bunch of single people tell them what marriage is. And they don't come in as whole people. So they don't contribute as whole people. Does that make sense? That's why it's important, in my opinion, to decenter men. Because when a woman decenters men, she comes to her higher calling. You do great things. You can do great things. This is not about me being a false prophet or trying to tell you be unhappy in life. That's not what this is about. It's about really taking the time to know yourself, understand yourself, get a good sense of yourself. So that when it is time, because we all have time, you know, I don't think you're going to be single for the rest of your life i don't know if that's even sustainable i see a lot of people preaching that but i don't i don't know you know don't get me involved in this mess but i don't know if that's sustainable but take the time in your life take this season in your life to improve yourself to be the best you you can be if that's taking a course if that's exercising i hate that I hate to put that in there. But health. How about that? Health. Take care of your health. Take care of your mind, your body, your spirit. They're all important. Lead yourself to the promised land. That's prayer. That's meditation. That's that's a closer walk with God, nature, whomever. These qualities are excellent. For your self-development. As so as it is with men. Like to take time and stop talking about women. When I look at these platforms, I think about <laughs> we're supposed to decent like decenter men. Women don't decenter men. And then, excuse me, women will get up there and jump on the 4B movement. That's not your movement. Excuse me. Ooh. Your movement is you. You're the movement. You make the decision. And that too means that you shouldn't even be like on social media for a while. You should take a break from that. Because so many influences or influencers are getting in your head and tell you all this stuff that doesn't make any sense. 
lot of that stuff they're talking about has absolutely positively nothing to do with you. It just has to do with them and what they're working through, their belief, their opinion. These are all my opinions. Take time. Be quiet. Take five minutes a day, 10 minutes a day, 15 minutes a day, whatever. Work up a time in your life when it is just silent and you get to hear yourself talk. Get to hear what's going on with you. There's a lot of peace in decentering, not just men, but a lot of other influences in your life. That's how you can rise to the higher calling. Those are the best things that, that the best qualities that you develop. Does that make sense? That was supposed to come out like this is how you develop the best qualities in yourself. And become comfortable. This is number 12 for a man. And yes, I'm a serpent as a woman. Yeah. Become comfortable telling people no and hearing no from others. Yes. I'm trying to think of a time, an example of just saying no. I don't understand. And I'm just going to express this frustration here. Are, are people really going around telling people, not telling people no? Because do you are you really not telling your child no? Are you really allowing your child to put his hand in his mouth and then go put his finger in the socket? Like at some point in life, the word no is applicable. It happens. I just can't believe that people are walking through this earth and nobody has ever heard the word no. I can believe people who have never said the word no. But I can't believe that people have never heard the word no. Anywho, you have to get comfortable with no. This is one of the things I said in the live. I was saying this about women in general, um, getting these surgeries, trying to appeal to men. And the, one of the biggest lies and tricks and deceits on the internet is that these people, all these men, will get up there and talk about what all men want, all men like, all men need. You ain't got to worry about what all men want, all men like, all men need, all men find attractive. When you decenter men, that all men mentality, right? You concentrate and raise your vibrations up to the one that you're supposed to be with. Like, there are a lot of trolls that come up on my channel and say, oh, well, blah, 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 you're hair, you're this, you're whatever. I don't care about them because they don't mean anything to me. I'm not here to appeal to all men or appeal to all women. I'm only here to appear, appeal or talk to the women that are on that vibrational scale. A lot of people aren't going to like me. A lot of people aren't going to like you. Just because you're beautiful, that doesn't mean that everybody finds you beautiful or attractive. It's okay to know. To men who call themselves good men, it's, it's okay to say no. No is a word. Babies lose that word all the time. They say no. You tell them, go sit down. No. Eat your vegetables. No. Like, I just can't believe that people are not comfortable saying the word no and hearing the word no. I, I can't believe that. I, I find that... I don't, I'm not saying it doesn't happen. I just find it very difficult to comprehend. You mean to tell me you are walking through this earth getting everything that you want and you're still complaining? Really? Anywho. <laughs> of course you got to get comfortable with no. No is a word. A two-letter word. It is very powerful. Uh, this is mostly for the men because I guess 
they're the ones who have the problem with the word no. I just don't understand. Like, are they really do the world with you know with out the word no? I find that difficult. Um. So he concluded this. Uh, Today, to build a healthy long-term relationship with a woman is necessary to exercise these traits and lessons in their personality. Always listen to a woman and welcome her love. You can make strong relationship with a girl or your beloved partner by practicing these lessons in, in their daily life. And that's true. But let me tell, let me, uh, Tell me in the comments, do you agree with these 12 traits that women find attractive in men? And feel free to add your own. Also, I'll link a description of this video in the end, uh, the, the article in the description. Girl, I don't know what's going on with me. Um, it's all in my head straight, but it ain't coming out of my mouth like that. I don't know. Anyways, I will link the article in the description and tell me what you think about the 12 um attributes 12 things that women want in the men because i think these are very interesting and um to be honest with you they're very applicable for women as well as you know Oh, I just took over the whole man thing. <laughs> Anyways, thank you for stopping by. Don't forget to like and comment. And if you want to see more content like this, do subscribe. Consider it. Anyways, until next time. Bye.